just saw him bear in the local hinges. Every Friday night when we're stuck here, we do a local tradition. No, we don't have any good bounce and candle and things like that. And tonight we're going to do quarry. I haven't actually talked anything quarry to anybody since a side somewhere or other up near Cambridge, of course. The last time I actually did it, and any BC can got on, we said they would search her along to find it at Morrison debate. And they thought, tell me when I work shops is a good idea. It wasn't, but <laughs> it passed the time away anyway. Um, right, why haven't I done it before? Oh, it's not terribly interesting, really. <laughs> Oh, 
foot up, move up a bit, move back a bit, move up a bit, move back a bit. It's foot up twice. Most men in China's out of day, of course, is foot up, but um, for some of the stick down, it's a bit up twice. Right? Um, face across the second finger. Cross <coughs> over. Now, it's going to be difficult because there isn't enough room. Doesn't matter. Pass your opposite. Turning very rapidly to face back the way you come from. Oh. <laughs> 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 How to be chosen somebody of the same size to dance with. And then you, you back away from each other a bit. And then you come back, you do exactly the same thing. <laughs> Pass and turn rapidly, on the spot, and retire. <laughs> the trick with Hennington is that you don't get very far past each other because you try and do the pass and turn in the first bar. So it's the yum da yum da. That's right. Back to back. Crossover pass. Right shoulders and pass behind into a line. <laughs> That's a line, you're in parallel. And retire to place. There we, there we try going the other way with it and pause, right? The key thing is to pass through the shoulder, the shoulder position at the right time at the end of the second bar. Right. Well, we've done foot up, crossover, back to back. Hey, hey. Uh, that's a normal Morris head as far as we're concerned tonight. Off you go. Ends to an end. Middles go towards the top. And do the other half. Anybody who wants to do a little bit of reading, i.e. search, a great quarry, will find there's it's certainly the usual trouble with the tradition and not enough information to tell you what to do. There's actually far too much and it's all different. See, so not only did um, Sharp give Kimber's name to Mary Neal so that Kimber and one of his friends came up to the Esperance Club and they were taught at the Esperance Club and um, the Esperance Club or Mary Neal published the dances that they taught. But um, Sharp got it, got the dancers, they published to start with on the basis of a Flory Warren, who was the chief instructor at the Esperance Club, the dancer heading to dancers. So that's the first thing. <coughs> the second thing that when Sharp revised the dancers to publish his Morris Nats book, you know, uh, from Kimber, um, he didn't inquire too closely of Kimber how it was all done. So the EFDSS grew up with a way of doing the dancers which isn't the way Kimber wanted them done either. Right? So, um, also Mary invited Trafford, who was the, the other foreman, as it were, at Quarry, besides Kimber's father, um, and he taught Quarry dancers to the Esperance Club and the Clive Carey Collective Commons, so that's the fifth and sixth way of doing it. And then uh, uh, Miss Herschel in Oxford employed um, a man Danbridge to be taught by Trafford to do the thing so that she could actually note the dance of day from the young man doing them. That's yet another version of doing it. Sharp tried recollecting it about 19, 19, 1920, and made some of the corrections that you find in more <coughs> books are in fact the fact that Sharp realised he'd got it wrong, but he couldn't actually admit he'd got it wrong, but they could be alternatives. Seems very much like conservative government. You know. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the 30s, it was suddenly realised that the ring reading in 1936 where Kimber turned up, 
that he actually said to people, why do you do the dances the way you do it? They said, well, that's the way we've been taught. Isn't that the way they are? And they said, no, they don't go like that, really. So the EFDS, or at least the Kenworthy Scope of the Room, discovered that Kimber had somewhat different ideas about how the dancers were going. Right? Now, part of the problem was that he'd actually changed his mind how the dancers went as well. You know? But they then got together the information from uh, him and that they produced a draft book that was heading to Morris, which is yet another way of doing it. Then after the war, 1949, Kimber raised the boys' side at the grammar school. Um, and that's important, grammar schools, they all, they all were professional people in the end. Um, and when they formed the Headington Quarry Club, again, a reformed club, because between the wars, those quarry dancers that were around had actually been dancing in Oxford City and so on. Um, Kimber then started introducing new dancers or changing the dancers. And we meet one or two of these changes tonight, I hope, anyhow. So there's around a dozen ways of doing it, including, say, the EFS of standard teaching and so on. And one of the problems is reconciling all this if you feel that reconciliation is actually needed. You know? um, now, what I'm going to teach you is, uh, out of this collection, the versions I like. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to dig it out any further, it's possible to do so. Um, to say, go and look at the, the team, you know, you'll get yet one team, you'll get yet another way of doing it. Partly because I think the average age when I last saw have gone up somewhat, so the whole effort level's been a bit, you know, uh, you need to see them when they're all young again. Right. Um, still no musicians, so. Uh, Let's just run through the figures.
start with. <laughs> Of each tradition 
they just get more difficult as you go through the dance, which is why it always starts dancing on the spot. Then you go forward a little bit, then you go a bit, a bit more, and so on. You end up with rains or whole hay, which is very difficult at the end. And I've been trying to persuade the audience how clever you are, you don't give the game away too early. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, you may not think much of it. <laughs> um, but the other one, which is um, single stepping, is bean setting. Um, now, it has absolutely nothing. If you ever tried putting in runner beans or broad beans, it has nothing to do with this dance. Right? Um, so, face. Now, one of the collectors said you hold your stick like it's a pen. That makes it quite interesting. <laughs> That's right, like that, you see, because then it makes it quite easy to do.
first difference you should notice is that now we're, we're back to ordinary stepping. One, two, three, up, one, two, three, up, one, up, two, up, step, and to jump. Right? Let's all be able to do that. If not, we're going to have a very really tiresome weekend. <laughs> Um, so all, when I call all what we're stepping to the figures this time, then the chorus is surprising like anything you've, what you've seen before. <clears throat> Hold your stick up. <laughs> Billy again, Billy again, when shall I say my Billy? <laughs> Pauls and hip, pulls and hip.
September, the, the time when at the Esperance Club in London, they'd already <coughs> met the Bidford dancers and had learned some of the, the best of the As always, Bill Timber suddenly remembers a Headington verse and something to see. Right? Um, and that's why I think there was a lot of variations on um, Other dancers were, were getting upstairs and when he picked up for somebody else, Princess Rose's gig and so on. Um, the quarry club since the war could never argue with him. You know, he said it was so, it had to be so, didn't it? I think he did it, even if they didn't believe it. <laughs> he just had to accept it. That was the way it was. Well, we're going to do Mary Kimber, but not immediately. That's a much more complicated dance. Um, okay. uh, we must try and work our way through some of the other elementary stuff as well. Don't lose your stick, we get a pair of hangings. <laughs> Tomorrow is a different matter. 
families. Sure. Start with something like Shoreham. Keep the wish a very military <laughs> style man, although I'm not aware of anything other than the option of the military infantry. But he was a rather upright stance, which of course is not typical of the other corridors. Very much in pushing down, it was sort of like pushing yourself up. Right? Now, everybody knows that when you push your arms down, that doesn't do anything to far as elevation is concerned. In fact, pushing down, accelerating down, in fact, uh, doesn't help you at all to get it at all. But just, he liked the wooden. And you let the handkerchiefs float up at the end. So you, as you come up, you let it slip up. Not the hands, but the handkerchiefs. So, I say you were doing, I forgot my ring. Come on, Yeah, yeah. Lady um, bum, 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 da 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 Try something to do cross back steps, right? If you all stand with your feet turned in a bit. That's right, it's the stop you falling over. I think if you stand like that, you feel twitty. If you stand like that, it's extremely difficult. Whoa. It's comfortable. It's really, you find a position somewhere between 45 and 60 degree angle for moving off in any direction with comfort. It's as simple as that. That's the way the Greeks stood and walked for several centuries until Victor Sylvester got into this form of dancing and decided it's far better if your feet were parallel. Which is why ballroom dancing is always a bit of a mystery for most dancers. Left foot across the cross apart, cross apart. <laughs> Cross-backs and warm-hanky dancers 
So you just oh, front, 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 front one went down and everybody yeah, leapt yeah, over. Yeah, yeah, so the front yeah. went down and everybody leapt over. So in fact, you were faced by an endless series of backsides to jump yeah. over. Yeah. And just <laughs> over. <laughs> we're not doing that. Oh, 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 oh no, 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 no. You have to save yourself for the next one. For the leapfrog dance. This is Bonnie Green. Are we ready then, those volunteers? So we're just getting into space for frogs. That's what's happening so far. It's a leapfrog Thank <laughs> you. 
in the audience, you have no idea what the best thing you So I always recommend you to be claiming to the middle chair. The audience knows what to expect, and then they get something a bit different, and that's fun. Right? I do.
same stretch of hallway, so this is the call, and off you go. Face up, Freddy, once to yourself. Come, you must have
in turn for the set, right? <laughs> crosses our diagonal with two slight capers. Caper, 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 caper together, caper, caper, caper Some of the men just did eight plain capers. <laughs> <laughs> also, in the past, there was a, in the village there was a, a variation on how the what the slow caper was. Anyhow, and to some people it was caper caper together pause, caper caper together pause. Right. In other words, it's a matter of personal interpretation. Right. So we cross the diagonal on two slow capers. Yeah. Dun 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 dun
somewhere between four and half past four for the caves go away. But at half past five, the sun comes up and it's too late. Oh, right? The breakfast is not at half past five. It's at a more civilized hour. Oh, that is not take it for us. What? <laughs> <laughs> they know they can do for another 10 or 20 years. Yeah, we're in a unique situation. And no appealing to the past helps us. Yeah, because Victorian 40-year-olds, if you were, you know, uh, well, they were working on stuff to death anyhow. Mm. That's what they, they had all their response. Well, they'd married late, their kids were young, things like this. Yeah, well, it's different. Like it's never been, as far as I could tell. 
I've certainly remembered when I was about 24, 23, 24, and the university team. The university team I was involved in was having numbers problems, and someone else spoke to one of the other people in the team had been talking to a relative who was also a teacher at um, technical college or something like that, wasn't the university. And they said that they're having the same problems. All of the university societies, all the clubs and societies, were having this problem, as if it were that people felt, oh no, the world has changed. When I go to university or college, I have to work because I need a good qualification in order to get the job, because it's no longer a meal to me. And the lecturer, this lecturer said, it isn't actually making any difference to their work. They're not working any harder. Any better. Or any better. What was happening is that instead of getting involved with something that takes them away from their work, like some sort of sport or some mm. club or society, all that's happening is that they're going down the pub. Or getting involved in, getting involved in <laughs> popular culture, so, you know, music or television or something. They're not doing something positive. But isn't that actually changing how much, how much work they do? Yeah. But this seems to have started in the early 80s. <laughs> people who were who, just a few years younger than me. And we look, look around and there are very few people younger than me here. But isn't leisure and the being involved in something actually part of your balanced life? Mm. You know. It should be. I mean, but in, in, the 80s, in the early 80s, when um, the economy was doing something like boom, no, it wasn't. Wasn't it? Wasn't it? Well, I can't remember. Well, you know, there were Japanese or whatever. It was something coming to the fore. A little bit of good work, make money, I mean, that's an occupation. And the leisure activity was going around getting pissed, being Blu ray Henry's and things of that sort. And um, that doesn't actually fit at all together with doing something that's socially useful, apart from spending your money and drinking jam. Or something that made any important traditions like bar dancing. Um, or supporting your local democratic society, or or something of that sort. It was all to do with making money. And essentially, essentially making money doesn't usually, well, in, in the contemporary society, it doesn't go together with being benevolent. I mean, in the past, there was, a, there was some benevolent people who made lots of money, sat back and said, all right, I'll now this stone is fund on libraries, whatever, like the bank or something like that. I don't think that sort of ethos has, has um, fallen down. Money making part has came up in the 80s. Yeah. Doing anything useful with that just disappeared. really haven't the experience. You see, from some 1980, before 80, my kids started, you know, having qualified university, getting jobs and something. But their time at university was, well, the eldest two were horse dancers, the next one was a, a folk singer, the next one was a, a cloggy, <laughs> so on, you know. Um, they all had involvement in things and so on. But that's only because I felt we brought them up to feel they want to be involved. Also, they probably yeah. brought them up to be part of a team. There's lots of people who don't want to be involved in the team, do they? And the well, that's why I the, find the, when the teaching people. young kids, well, I say young kids, you know, nine, eleven year old yeah. sort of grades, that, that they have no experience, or most of them I meet don't have any experience of working together as a group. And it's one of the things they've got to learn, which folk dancing at various sorts, one of the few ways they ever learn to be part of a group. And if schools these days are cutting down on the, the curriculum, then they won't learn these team events. So they'll, they'll grow up not knowing that you can have fun in a team. Oh, but they work as groups. Oh, right. you know, they're taught in groups and they're expected to work together. But that's part of the curriculum. Mm. But, we can see. but that's why skates, brownies, and all that sort of lot are good for well, yeah. young people because they actually work together in a peer group. Yeah. And that's one of our problems we always find is that people join a moral side with no experience of working with a group of people of like interest and like ability. They're also used to be in a hierarchical arrangement where whoever somebody looks after them who has bigger, greater experience, you know, being able to get in the Interesting thing with our, my present job is that just over half the people in the company are subcontractors paid by the hour. The subbies are the ones who will work all the hours got gave them. Now, actually, they don't need to. 
the permanent staff who don't get paid as much, who you'd think would want to grab you the overtime or work the shifts or whatever. It's actually quite difficult in some respects to get Burmese to work the extra hours, whereas subbies to work whatever you want. And all they do, a lot of them live away from home, they rent accommodation and stay home, rent them, and they're the sort of the archetype of the same. They end up, the only thing they do is work. Because they're all on short contracts, they don't, they're not in one place long yeah. enough to build up yeah. connections and things like that. And it sort of seems very, what, what are they going to do with all this money? It's very worrying. I work on short contracts. Yeah, but you're not a typical subbing suit. No. I am a typical southerner. Subbing. 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 Subcontractor. Subcontractor. Oh, see. Oh, right. Subbing. But in well, her business. I missed the rest of the conversation. See, I in, her, in her business years, I mean, it's just that you're, you're looking at one percent. 75% of our staff are on short-term contracts. But how many of them will move 300 miles every six months? None. Why? Because ours will do six. I've like, had one guy. Because you're getting more contract with you. Contract with you. Bags, but it's getting more common. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm in the DRA. And we're, it, most people are get new people on like three year contracts. It's not like civil service for life. You know, we're trying to break away from that image. And if it's like my one of my sons, David, um, uh, he's in medical physics. He doesn't expect to be in anywhere for more than two years. The part of his career is actually building up experience. He has to move to do it. And I see that's actually a deficit in terms of Moist teams. Because a lot of people, one of the good things about being the Moist is you can actually move. If you move to somewhere, you meet, you know, yeah, you meet the local people, moist people, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So you the local but that's a change in my lifetime. See, when I started yeah, no, 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 you I couldn't do that. I don't think that's why we're not getting new people in. I mean, no, but I, the thing is, people are just moving. I understand what you're saying about the non-permanency, but once they're in, then that's actually a good way of... You know, but actually, when you move to there a, there's a syndrome that says, I started with such and such a team, and that's my view of what the Morris team is. And if I go to any other team in the country, the chances are it won't be exactly the same and therefore I'll get wrong. I mean, I, have, I, I didn't do that. Isn't that great? You've started your own team and told them what they're going to do. I mean, it's a starting point. I joined a team that's going to But quite a lot of people do that. It, 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 it's an experience we've had quite a lot. Yeah. Yeah. People who dance with other teams come to us and you know, perhaps it's something, with, well, it is something to do with us, but you know, they don't settle with us. We, we do better with people who haven't danced at all rather than people who dance with other teams. And I, I don't think it's peculiar to us, I've seen it elsewhere. I've seen people who dance with us go elsewhere and they'll come back and they'll say, it's the same. Because it's not the same. Part of it's about their, their, their expectations, because I'm thinking about it, and the people who actually stay with my team and they come to join our team if they've danced before are people who are not cotton floor dancers, but people who say North West dancers. North West dancers will stay with our team and be quite happy. Cotton floor dancers will come in and they'll go away again. You know, so maybe you're right. Maybe people have to set expectations about what they, you know, what they want. And if it doesn't fit in what they've heard from the person, then they'll play this guy away. We have some. Well, I, mean, I, I stay with my present side on the basis that I actually like the people that are in it. Yeah. And it's really nothing to do with what they do. Yeah. I actually love them and I actually do things. There's a lot of people in multiple sides. They dance. Oh, yeah. The thing that worries me, you see, is that at my age and my interests, social interests are such, you know, I like the side full of married people who have kids, we have barbecues and things of that sort, you know, I like the social side of it, because there are people who have similar interests to myself. Which means, you know, I'm automatically locked into a 40 year old scene. The, uh, the youngsters. Well, you know, Fleet's worked its way through a lot of people in that time. <coughs> and it's a very, very nice bunch of work. It always was a nice bunch, you see. <laughs> That's the problem. We do have a, an image where um, 
you know, whoever's drawn this winter, by the time we get round to the summer, I've forgotten the new, who the newcomers are. They just fit yeah. in yeah. to the organisation. They dance like all the others. They think like all the others. And it's great. But you meet some people and you say, well, you know, you're like us. Why don't you go and join so-and-so? You know, there are enough teams in our area to actually find a home for anybody. Someone spent three years, I was <laughs> this is thinking of the Morris though, as a, a sort of social organisation which we're part of. Now that, obviously that's an important part of the Morris in this place. Always was. You know, the, the group of people which you have to feel comfortable with in the at all. But it doesn't actually mean that your view of what you are to the outside world is any better because of it. So it works for us. You've got a group that's totally self-contained. It can be very We've noticed this various teams who are considered to be unfriendly and arrogant by other people yeah. in, in, in Morris World. And looking at them. Can't imagine that. Can't be. Name names. <laughs> <laughs> Kenneth. <laughs> Yeah. No, I've never heard it said of kids. No, you're quite right, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who, who have you heard it said? I will provide you a written apology. Um, to a <laughs> you can buy us a beer. I would think the team that most people Not know. Not all of them. I would have heard it said of teams further north as well. Seven champions are, are a good example that most people know. I've never heard that. Before. Do you know any teams that are oh, arrogant? Enough. Yeah, they're mostly crap. I think one of the things is that there are teams like that who actually fulfil all the social needs of the people in the team. Yeah. So the reason that they don't, they're not particularly outgoing and friendly is, is not because they're necessarily being deliberately like that. It's just because everything's, everything's there anyway for them. It's funny you should say that. Self that's self that's self exactly the problem the British Legion have. In our part of the world, <laughs> they're actually the other organisations see them as inward looking and unfriendly because, in fact, their organisation does provide a lot of their social lives very effectively. Oh, another team from, I'm just not to get the chance, the other team that's been set off quite a lot is Rivington. And they're actually very friendly to each other. It's very difficult to get in on that because, yeah. not because they're pushing you out, but because they're always going in. Well, that's one of the things I've noticed in being involved with women's side for the last 17 or 18 years is in fact there's a different attitude within them than there are within the men's sides because the women are it's nice more you I know no, I think the more used to be supportive <laughs> mm. nice uh, with Minden Rose where a couple of them have come widowed in the time you know the team members of the team were very supportive through the sort of period of their life and very helpful and of course the other thing about the women's side that well, are our free lot is it actually enables the, the women to mature. You know, they actually develop as personalities and so on while they're involved with the Morris. Was she coming? Was she coming? Oh, she always was developed. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it's, you know, I, I find that's a fascinating aspect of it. <coughs> but it's, it's a it's, sad reflection that the women true. who come, yeah. in fact, really are, tend to be a little, um, well, Backward and coming forward. Well, please, I mean, a lot of them have a sort of um, left school, married, had children, and have then been overshadowed. And suddenly it's their own hobby. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah Sometimes what happens is they discover it at the time they're looking for something new in their life and they yeah. go and get divorced. Or, well, I mean, one of that's been. Well, yeah. seriously. In fact, in, it's, in fact, in Fleet, what happened, of... the medical join Morris sites now as well. Well, you become part of a, of a close group when you go away on weekends and things, yeah. you know, and it's your first step outside of, you know, being a mother and all the rest of it, mm. and suddenly you think, good heavens, and you yeah, might miss it. Well, I was quite interested in, in, in our side of, um, I, have, I run an address list for Christmas cards and so on, you know, and I keep saying to people, you know, well, who's your husband, who's your partner, and things like this, you know, and quite a lot of them, they're not interested in telling me. You know, if you send them a Christmas card, they want it to them, not to them and their husband, if they've got one. In fact, 
I've given up trying to understand the prize <laughs> play. Because some of our team, you know, I mean, it's like Maggie, she turns up with two kids sometimes and another time, I've no idea. So I don't want to know. You know, we got on quite well within the group and so on. But I was surprised the number of husbands who came to Portsmouth. You know, it's quite interesting. Yeah. It? Yeah, it wasn't yeah. just for the fish and chips. No, it wasn't. <laughs> It's interesting that you're saying that women are more supportive. I mean, because you, you, you haven't had the res results of the sports survey yet, but apparently one of the best ways of avoiding an accident is not being a member of New Westerns, because we reported an awful lot of sports injuries. But it's probably a lot to do with the fact that we actually, we, you know, we, we actually accommodate people in the team who have bad backs, have bad ankles. Um, you know, that's how they put up with me, thank God. Oh. <laughs> but, you know, but, you know, they, they do actually accommodate people, which means people do stay around longer. But then on the other hand, you do get people coming to the team and thinking, look at all these old crocs. <laughs> they go, oh God, do I really want to be one of these? But we still have young people. I mean, you know, if they're by the past year, we've actually had an influx of people to the but point isn't we've got it the more nature people than existing members. Isn't it the nature to join something like a Morris side, you've got to be tolerant. Yeah. The only way to work together is actually to be tolerant. You're not being paid to work with people. No. Well, it's about finding something that meets your style, that meets your needs, that meets you know the style that you want to do things. I mean, because you know, if you look at Morris teams, there's a whole range of people from the very, very traditional all the way down to people who are very, very outrageous, like Ron Liberty in their heavy metal Morris style stuff. But there's also the other gamut around those, those people who are very, very excellent in what they do and people who are like your five-a-side football clippers. And then, you know, and you, and you basically, you know, if you have like your two-way scale, you know, actually can start plotting where teams actually belong on that scale. You know, your traditional versus your outrageous, your Premier League versus your five-a-side. And then, and then you actually, you know, can pick a team actually what you want to do and where you want to be. Yeah. But most people don't know until they actually get there what people are going to turn out like. Oh, yeah. Yeah. To the extent that we got two guys who joined Porridge who always wanted to be Morris dancers. And they assumed that when they joined, they'd be learning about sort of handkerchiefs and stick dancers. They didn't know what North West Morris was. Yeah. And in fact, they, they stuck. They both stuck for quite a, long, quite a long time. But they weren't in a position to shop around to try and find a team that suited them. Why do they want to be Morris dancers? I get worried when people come to us saying they want to be Morris dancers. <laughs> well, one, one, one in one Why case, it's because he's had this thing about tradition. He's very into tradition. And the other case, I have no idea why Steve Andrews wants to be Morris dancers. Drinking, well, I suppose. No, he did lost that anyway. No, he managed, I mean, he managed that all on his own then. Yeah. Fleet, Fleet recently danced for some brownies. Which is, it's nothing unusual on it before, but this time we're dancing for the brownies because they were working towards their cultural medal mm -hmm. or badge. And we were the English culture. But a side that has these problems is the one from Guernsey, you know, bells and broomsticks. There aren't enough women to actually have civil sides on the island. <laughs> So they've got to accommodate those who want to be, <laughs> is it a Cotswold border and clock? Yeah, we actually have to have, um, you find this in Australia and New Zealand, teams that have this problem. They have to cover a wider range of dance interests than perhaps individuals really want. Perhaps that's why Dublin yeah. do that. When, when, when Dublin split, one lot split yeah. away to remain traditional and the other lot do Cotswold border and, uh, and fox stuffing. Well, I can think of something like, well, like, like Bourne Bumpers, who's had a number of offshoots mm. of people. In fact, up in Cheshire, it was two as, as well. Sides broke up because they either didn't practice enough or they practiced yeah. too much. Yeah. They didn't like the sort of events. So, you know, they actually f find the group that it fitted and then you could join, which means you could have them fairly thick on the ground to actually have a choice. Which causes yeah. problems of its own. Well, is that... We haven't got too many sides at the moment. I mean, I'm always getting phone calls saying, can you find us a Morris site for something or other, and there's never one available. Yeah, and that's because a lot of sides don't want to do the sort of things, the sort of things that fake. Oh, yeah, but they don't want to do anything. You know, you can hardly ever find them. Uh, I've already had this evening a conversation about how on earth can I see a certain side. You know, we don't really know. You know they're not going to do very much this summer. 
sort of thing. Like <coughs> the virus is not thick on the green, in my opinion. But it is sometimes locally, and sometimes the consequences. Either there aren't enough people to go around, and therefore every side is sprutting about, or you get the people who belong to you know, three or four sides in the area, and therefore are never available to go to any of them. <laughs> but all this is <coughs> to still addressing the basic question about why do people join Morris sites, so and what's in it for them. You know, and I think we don't have a problem of identifying is it where what people want to get out of it, particularly, as I say, the 40-year-old, which is a new problem. <coughs> I think there is a, I think there are different reasons why people join, and oh, I yeah. think that causes problems sometimes. And we've had a big debate in our team between the sort of evening class people who come and want to learn everything that's going. And I'm thinking of a pair in particular who lived in America and, you know, joined, um, you know, contra dancing and done this, that and the other. And they come and they join us and they really like what we do. Um, but they want to do something different now. You know, thank you very much, we enjoyed learning that. Um, and yeah. if you say, actually we're here to go and dance it out, well that's mm. all right, but you know, actually what we want to do is learn something different. What's wrong and, and, well you either you know, you either accept them on that basis or you don't. I mean, well I know you, you know, do, but it, it yeah, it's it's a different that. but that that's within our team, that's one one oh. end of a, a yeah, spectrum. And there's another end which says we're about, you know, showing well, off before. I'm taking an attitude. One well, thing I'd love is for everybody in the world to actually dabble with a bit of Morris so everybody liked it. I wouldn't want everybody doing it, there'd be no audience. <laughs> or anything like that. It'd be it would nice be nice if everybody actually thought of us favourably. Yeah. So you want a high, I think, you want a high throughput of people. You know, you, in other words, you want to accommodate. The peripheral people, not so say, come along, enjoy yourself. You're welcome, you know. Come wait when you can. Um, and what's worse, you're not available often. You know, you're, we're not relying on you, but you're still welcome. Yeah. And that's the Morris is like that. I thought. In some ways, it can it be a very be. nice way to belong to a team. And I used to used to bass drum for Heart and Soul the last six months I was in five. And that was really nice because when I wanted, when I could or wanted to be there, I was made very very welcome. It always, you know, always seemed to really like having me there, but there was no pressure at all. It was the position I normally end up in teams. So that was such a nice change. Oh. Recommend it. Try. In a different situation, if you were a dancer. Oh yes, yeah, so one well. of the reasons yeah. I wasn't a dancer. <laughs> well, does anybody know of sides that ask for people to be committed? I mean, I know of an American side that basically, when you join, they actually say to you, "We want you to honour an agreement for a two-year commitment." To dancing, you know, it's really not worth training you and getting you work up to stand if you're not going to be with us for a while. But I've not met an English side that does that. No. <laughs> luxury, luxury. It's not, <laughs> not, it's not like saying it's ours, you can only come and join us on our terms. I mean, I've always had this with, with, like, with Phoenix. If somebody just wants to come along and practice, and even if, you know, if they don't make it, I've got no problem so with what, that. Yeah. yeah, the more the merrier. <coughs> I'd, rather, I'd rather hang on to them, but if they want to just come and then go, then I can't. You can't dictate to them. Yeah. It's something they're doing their spare time. Yeah, but some know, some of the like Appalachian teams, you know, have a very restrictive policy oh. because they put on a show, mm -hmm. you see, and they need so many people for their show. And when they got enough, they don't need any more, and they don't want to train someone up and then them leave. Mm -hmm. So. They are really asking you for commitment, and the same yeah. in the upper side. Mm. To train someone up for competition standard means a lot of commitment on the teachers' part, and so they really expect it from the team members as well. But I mean, in mapping, I actually need it from the, the individual as well. It's not, you know, yeah. you've actually got to put more to it in Cotswold. But you see, it, it doesn't matter so much in Cotswold because you can swap people in and out of the dance. Yeah, but it's sometimes. Yeah, people yeah. only dance in one position. Mm. It's a bummer when you suddenly find you've got three number fives. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a dancer in my team one year who said, well look, I'm busy with work and a lot of things this year and I won't be able to commit myself to as much this year. I won't be sort of, I'm, I'm very sorry, I won't be able to come so often. And I said, well, this isn't a problem, we've got other people in the team. And what I do enjoy is the fact that when you do come, you're you're there 100%. Yeah. It's a lot better than having somebody who's only half-hearted about it all the time. Yeah. 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 Well, as long as you know what people's levels of commitment are, you can always work out. Yeah. You know. 
I've had periods in my life where, in fact, I didn't even see the Morris side all year. You know, there were periods when that other things got in the way. It's hard to believe. <laughs> it's <laughs> <free. Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Before I knew you. <laughs> Nineteen seventy-one to seventy-four, actually. Oh, not then. Take it back. Well, I was on a major project which had just got going, and I was one of the senior officers. You know, there really wasn't time for anything like having a family or anything like that. You, know? you came to Letter Kenny with us. He's seventy-three, though. Oh, yes. That, yeah. Yeah, that was one year where I did something. But, you know, there were years where the Hallsway Manor weekend, or its equivalent, that uh, Albert had obtained, was the only thing I actually went to. You know, when I stopped with Abingdon in 1970, you know, um, that was it for regular dancing aside for many years. Having said that, I mean, 18 years ago, no, I think thirdly is 21, so I've had 20 years when I joined them, so that's about 77, yeah. And that, they, that happened, you see, is that in fact the, um, the foreman and the man who was teaching them ran away together, oh. uh, <laughs> leaving their Spiceful. families behind. So they found themselves with a squire, foreman or musician, simultaneously. <laughs> <laughs> So I got involved with them, and I suppose that's, yeah, you know, I enjoyed that. That was, you know, just about the time the Federation was beginning to pick up. Actually, uh -huh. going back to uh, Tony's point about people getting divorced, that's the reason I've noticed with new teams starting. Yeah. Is that we've got well, half pairs and mm -hmm. The Americans find the delightful thing is you only had to get three couples and you were in Morris side. <laughs> Well, got that long so two couples I mean, actually spoke to us so they they more so they had to find one couple. You know, ideal way. Well, it's, it's an ephemeral sort of side to start with, uh, but um, it fits their sort of way of life. It usually produces enthusiastic sides, which usually the public like. As you know, I mean, there are, there are quite a few sides that we all know who actually dance dreadfully, really. Yeah, but they're actually rather successful. You know, they're well liked locally, they have the rights of attitude, as far as the public's concerned, and so on. Get all the best with them. Yeah. This has always surprised me that some of the teams have managed to get to go abroad. They say, oh, we're off to, we're off to America. And that one? Yeah. Why can't I wish only the best would go to America. Why, why can't <laughs> It's not. It's, it's the case of. It's not a case of. Well, yes, we we're a lot better than them, so we should get invited. It's a case of. Why the hell can't we get that match in organisation and enthusiasm yeah. together? Yeah. We don't hear English signs going to Australia and New Zealand though. Oh, they come over here. Occasionally, but it's a little long way. Oh. Yeah, well, I say, if there's anybody in the Federation who wins the jackpot, and, you know, not shared with anybody, what they should do is take the whole of the Federation on the World Cup. They got some dying gratitude for so many people. I mean, to organise one Morris team is bad enough, but to organise the whole Federation. <laughs> <laughs> You, you said there's states. all this money available, they'd organise themselves for once. Yes, yes, yes. once yeah. Oh, but then they're the fun excuse. They say, no, 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 we've got to feed the cat, the rabbit, and have another baby or something else. We've got to get the <laughs> most. <laughs> 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 it's dreadful, isn't no, it? Those are oh, yes. no problems here. Isn't the old cat or rabbit you're going to deal with? It's hundreds of them. You know, <laughs> that's not a problem. You can actually get somebody to volunteer to run a cattery while you're away. It's much easier. It's actually the, the old parish priest when I was a kid at the church of the And he, he said, if you're ever going to do anything, do something that's so big it's ridiculous. Because people will think, wow, well, it must be being a success. He wouldn't have started something like that if he hadn't worked it out. And he used to get away with the most crazy things. I mean, the, the time he decided 